just take a moment to honor these cards in our presence tonight, to thank the tarot for what they have to offer us. Starting with our past card, Ten of Swords. By the way, I'm pulling from the Dali Tarot, Salvador Dali artwork. And this is the fall of Julius Caesar on this card. And really it's about a different way of doing or thinking a different mindset, especially you see the birds on the card. Anytime we have swords, it's about like decision-making or thinking thought process and birds typically represent the mind as well. When we have the 10 of swords, anytime we have a 10, this is about a new chapter or it could be endings and beginnings. It could be completely different or it could be same but different. I always feel like it's a little bit of a transitional same but different, still holding on to a little bit of the past, but trying to move forward into the future. We have certainly felt this as we've moved into Virgo season over this past previous month before we hit Libra season. We had a lot of energy helping us to think for ourselves, do for ourselves, learn for ourselves, or maybe just get the ropes of it, get the grain of it, and then go out on our own in a more independent fashion. I really see this card as us having more freedom, more independence, more sovereignty, and more of a craving to rule our life, take back our power. We've been in a Pluto retrograde. We've been in, now Pluto's direct, but we've been in a Pluto retrograde. We've been in a Saturn retrograde. Both of those have to do with power, control, things where we can either give away our energy or we can take it back, take the reins of the horse and really lead the horse where we want it to go. So this Ten of Swords right now arriving as our past card reminds us to not attach ourselves to those old ways of thinking, those old mindsets, those old habits, old thought processes that no longer serve. It's time to embrace this new chapter of doing, thinking, decision-making. This is also maybe a chance to heal your bloodline and heal some karmic stuff generationally because eclipses give us the opportunity for that. With this eclipse arriving right on the cusp of our shadow season, our time of liminal spaces, the time when we honor the dead and our ancestors, I do believe that this card is telling us to take action, see this red, take action around making change in our bloodline generationally. For the present card, I pulled the star card. And it's actually got the Venus symbol on it. And this new moon, this eclipsed moon is in Libra, which is ruled by Venus. And the reason that the star card is sometimes represented by Venus is because it's related to the story of Inanna, which is related to Venus's journey in front of the sun, behind the sun, and then past the sun and Anana's journey into the underworld, where she strips down of all of her belongings, her titles, her jewels, her clothing, literally everything until she's down to her raw, bare bone self. And with that, she starts to realize what's really important. I believe that this card is asking us to take inventory of our life right now. Notice where we're giving our energy are we prioritizing relationships with things, with people, with what's not important instead of ourselves? Can we get back to ourselves? Can we get back into habits that support ourselves, choices that support ourselves? Remember that we are in Hasta Nakshatra with this moon as well. And in Vedic astrology, this Hasta Nakshatra represents not only the hands and how source can work through the hands in a holy way and through the heart chakra in a holy way, but also through the whole earthly human body. Notice how she's holding this vessel and she's pouring from it. It's not an empty vessel. Number one, she is making sure that she is always sustained, nurtured, taken care of, but also she is source as much as source is working through her and she came from source and source is above her and around her in the stars and with that kundalini snake that's slithering off to the side, 
she also is source pouring from that vessel endlessly meaning that your magic is always here your connection to source is always here your ability to do to make to uplift frequency for yourself and others is always here so embrace that right now during this libra new moon get back to the relationship of yourself with yourself and what that truly means go within meditate you might not sleep well but you can get into conscious rest through other ways of connection hypnosis just simply listening in stillness watching what happens listening to what happens observing nature around you there are many ways to connect for future card i pulled a page of wands we have this gentleman here with his auric field around him. He's also holding this wand that's got a lot of growth. He's super excited about where he is going. And the page always has this ambition along with a little bit of curiosity, a little bit of naivety, which is okay. It's okay to be naive and delulu when you're going after your dreams or really when you're working your magic. I was just talking to somebody the other day about how I've been in this world for about 13 years now. And when I first started out in this world professionally 13 years ago, it was not as accepted as it is now. When I was talking about chakras, people didn't barely have any idea what I was talking about. When I was talking about astrology, they thought that I was just one of those like woo woo Miss Cleo types, you know, crystal ball fortune teller. But now people are starting to take it more seriously. I'm very supported in what I do. People sometimes ask me, oh, what do you do aside from this? And I go, nothing. This is what I do. I'm supported in this. I'm supported in my craft. And the Page of Wands wants that for you. So it is time to embrace a future where you are in your craft, you're in your creative flow, you're in your magic, you believe in it, and it's actually making things happen. It's making you feel good. It's enhancing your life. Perhaps you're on a professional pursuit with it, but there is some sort of gain or profit or return from being in that magic. So right now the card is just telling you to keep going that there might be challenging times ahead, but even with that, you can walk through the fire and you can come out unburned. Keep holding on to your dreams and what they can become. Finally, I said, universe, give us one more card for this eclipse, just a little bit more. We got another swords card. This time we got the two of swords. And we've got this moon above, almost like an eclipsed moon. There's a bull underneath, which remember we were in the Taurus Scorpio series before this Aries Libra. Now we're in this Aries Libra, which is all about warrior energy with those swords. And we have the Pisces Virgo coming, which is that little moon ahead. Pisces is ruled by the moon as much as it is by Neptune. So this card is saying, hey, right now, you need to pay attention to your feelings. If you can see really close, the gentleman is blindfolded while holding the swords. And remember that swords are decision-making. We have the moon up above, again, reminding us of our inner conscious, reminding us of internal self, internal desires, emotions, all of that internal energy, and also a little bit of that feminine side. The swords are being held in a very balanced fashion between the masculine and the feminine. I can see this being a lot about this particular eclipse right now, being in Libra, being in Hasta Nakshatra. And also there is this reminder to Make some decisions moving forward that support your feelings more, that continue to support that balance, support your heart, support the peace. This person is blindfolded. They have no need to see where they're going because they're not at war. This eclipse is about creating peace, setting aside the battles and trusting that you can have that peaceful life and still be creative, still be artistic, still be fertile moving forward. I love that this is what the tarot has for you loves for this eclipsed moon. There's a lot of magic coming, so get ready.